for your throne is established. Ancient of days, we worship you. We honor you. Thank you. Worship you. Honor you. Worship of days. Your years have been long. O King of kings. So really our cries before your feet belong. Oh, you and I go in heaven. Thank you, Master. Touch someone here tonight. Let nobody leave here the same way they have come. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big clap of hand and be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name. Shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was taken, received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Confirming the word with signs following. Somebody say a loud amen. amen. Speaking on the subject rules or laws. Of evangelism. At the end of the day, our objective is to understand the rules that govern successful evangelism. I never read this from any book. I saw the scripture and the Holy Ghost showed me some basic rules and law. 
So at the end of the day, if it is in the in chemistry, they will call it Pauli's exclusive principle. <laughs> Or in uh, physics, Newton's laws of universal gravitation. But we'll name it later. Everyone who will be successful in the journey of evangelism must understand basic rules. Otherwise, you won't be able to preach when you need to preach to people. Basic rules on evangelism. These rules or laws will make evangelism or soul winning second nature or effortless. Now I am going to go over them very sharply. Rule or law number one. Consider everyone you meet unsaved until proven otherwise. Consider everyone you meet unsaved until proven otherwise. The Bible said for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Proverbs chapter, Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Salvation is never to be assumed. And I'll talk about that in another law. Young lady went to Asaba after we got an assignment in the church to reach out to the lost. And she did and was preaching to someone she met by the roadside. Unknown to her, this person was already saved but she was preaching all the same. That was how she met her husband and the husband met her, his wife. She preached all the same. And while she was preaching to this man who was already born again, the Lord ministered to the man, this is your wife. Consider everyone you meet unsaved until proven otherwise. Number two, never be deceived by looks, appearances, or attitude. Looks, appearance, or attitude. You may meet a person very calm and gentle who is a deadly killer. In Exodus chapter 2 verse 19, Moses, the Israelite, was assumed to be an Egyptian because of how he dressed. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. A person may look it and may not be it. And a person may not look it but be it. It's possible to see someone dressed like SU, Scripture Union. And he's a deadly prostitute. One of the most dangerous girls we ever met, my wife and daughter, Miss Nenche, one of the most dangerous girls we ever met, didn't wear any makeup, didn't look anything. But she walks herself from her house and stands by the roadside 
and looks at a man and says, I like you. And the man must follow her. And she does that every day. Every single day. I like you. Really? Let's go. Like a sheep to the slaughter. And the man must follow her. She did that for donkey years. Very deep in the realm of the spirit. When we prayed for her, was it not a serpent? She ring came out of her. This time. Thanks. She didn't look anything. She didn't look Jezebelic or Delilah. You may look at somebody who, who is looking like he wants to kill you if you preach to him. But he's clothed with questions. Looking for answer. He, his face may be because of the frustrations of his life. Maybe because of the miseries he's passing through. And he's actually looking for solution. We've seen such people where you, before you can start talking, they start crying. Am I communicating? Actually, some hostile looking people at times, some of them, the external host hostility is because of inward frustration. So, if you are deceived by, and, and then you can look at a gentle looking, smiley person who you the hell out of your life. You want me to be saved? Why? One young man in those days, he said, Jesus is the answer. And this answer, what is the question? The question is the question of sin. So, don't be moved by that. All manner of. One day we saw a terrible looking young lady at charity, myself and my wife. And we spoke to her and this girl walked out of that place on the spot. Walked out and never looked back. So the law number two says, never be deceived by looks, appearance, or attitude because a person may look it and it's not it. A person may not look it, but it's the person you are looking for. A person may appear hard and tough outside, but is looking for help inside. A person may look soft and simple on the surface, but very complicated to deal with. Don't be deceived by looks. Be led by the spirit. Number three. Everyone you see is going to die one day and end in an unpredictable eternity. For most of them. Everyone you see is going to die one day. It's important that we bear that in the mind. And end possibly can qualify it. Possibly in an uncertain unpredictable eternity. Everybody you see. So the person you are seeing today when he dies if he doesn't know Jesus, is going to hell. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. is appointed unto men once to die. After that, the judgment. Everyone you see is going to die one day and possibly end. In an uncertain, unpredictable eternity. It's important you bear that in mind. Number four. The person you see today may not be there tomorrow. That is, the person you see today may not be there tomorrow. Especially... 
if he is not saved. Particularly if he is not saved. If they are not saved. The person you are seeing today may not be there tomorrow. Why is this important? Okay, I'll wait till tomorrow and preach to him. Let's wait till tomorrow. I'll talk to him tomorrow. The person you are seeing today may not be there tomorrow, especially if they are unsaved. This is how I qualify it. You cannot guarantee anyone's life beyond the moment if they don't know God. You cannot guarantee anyone's life Beyond the present moment. If they don't know God. You can't. James chapter 4 verse 14. Said. If you start from verse 13. You see what, what, what he's saying. He said go to now. You that say today or tomorrow. We will go into such a city. And continue there a year. And buy and sell. And get gain. Whereas. You are planning talking tomorrow. Yet you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanished away. The person you are seeing today may not be there tomorrow. You cannot guarantee anyone's life beyond the present moment. Especially if they don't know God. Am I communicating at all? I've been in meetings where, oh, I'm not sure about someone here, but you will need to give your life to Christ now. And the person left, and the same day, the same day, the same day, in the evening, had an accident, and couldn't survive it. I heard the story of a young man, who during an altar call, he wanted to go out to give his life to Christ. His friend held him back. Are you stupid? Are you this and that? Later on, he went back home and this young man, whether fell sick or had an accident, died. And the friend who held him back, seeing how his friend died, gave his life to Christ on his funeral. This one was prevented from going to heaven by his friend. And the friend made heaven at his friend's funeral. Am I communicating? So this is important because there are times where people say, oh, let me leave it till tomorrow. Let me speak to this man. In fact, you can't guarantee anybody's life beyond the moment if they don't know God. I told you of I read Tori's testimony in an American restaurant where the Spirit of the Lord ministered to him while they sat there preparing the meal to minister to one of the, of the waiters. And he just sat down like, oh, this is restaurant. Okay, let's hold on a little bit. And, they, and it kept occurring to him. While they were preparing the food, doing the service and all, it kept occurring to him. Only after about 40 minutes there about, they've served them food and they've stayed in that place for 40 minutes and above. A tragedy had occurred at the kitchen, the back of the kitchen of this restaurant. And what was it? This same man that was serving them food just now was found hanging. He hung himself just now. He was quarter to go and the Lord ministered to this man to maybe rescue him. But he delayed, delayed. And the man killed himself and went to an uncertain eternity. So, just realize that it's a law that the person you are seeing today may not be there tomorrow, especially if they are not saved. That leads us to number five which says as much as possible give everyone the 
chance or opportunity. To make their ways right with God. As much as possible, give everyone the chance or the opportunity to make their ways right with God. I have not ended yet. To make their ways right with God as soon as now. As soon as now. As soon as when? Now. Because the last one told us you cannot guarantee the next moment. Does it mean, so are we going to be preaching to everybody on the road? Then how will you do any other thing with your life? How will you do any other thing with your, your time? That is why we are loaded with tracks, leaflets, pamphlets, materials. So that you pass it along as you go. If you cannot reap the harvest, at least sow the seed. Am I communicating? So that you, you, and then there are those particularly the Holy Ghost who lead us, I mean, people who walk with you, who live with you, who drive you, who cook for you. Who has security around you, whatever. You give everybody the opportunity as soon as now. Anybody getting anything here, say amen. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. He said, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold now is the accepted time. Behold, tomorrow is the day of salvation. When? When is the day of salvation? Give everybody the opportunity as soon as now. You know when they call me at times and they say I should pray for somebody who is terminally ill. The first prayer I pray for them is a prayer of surrender to Jesus Christ. At times the person is thinking, oh, it doesn't mean I'm going to die. <laughs> is that why he's leading me to Christ? No. I just want to be sure that we don't miss it. So that, that's the first thing I'll do. And after I finish doing that and say now, say after me, Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior, as my healer, as my deliverer. And then by the time we set that record right, the next thing is prayer for their health. And, I, and this has helped so much because I remember someone was brought terminally ill. We prayed, we did everything. Sometime back, the person passed. And the relations were happy that the happiest moment was that I led the man to Christ. It has, it's not once, not twice. That if nothing happened, at least they are sure of where he is going. Somebody say amen. Very, very important. As soon as now. As soon. When we come at, uh, at the airport sometimes, Several people will gather around us, pray for me, bless us. Say, okay, all of you gather together, gather together. All the blessings I want to bless you, I'm to pray for you, is useless until you give your life to Jesus. And after a few words, now pray this prayer with me. After we have done that, before we proceed, this makes life easy and effortless for you. So I want to say a loud amen. Is there anybody getting anything at all? Does it mean anything to you? All right. Now, please bear this. When we say, give everybody the opportunity to make their ways right with God, note, it is not in your power to save them, but it is in your power to minister to them. It is not in your power to save people, but it is in your power to minister to people. And what is important is the discharge of your responsibilities. You discharge your responsibilities and live 
the results to God. Hallelujah. As much as possible, give everyone the chance, the opportunity to make their ways right with God as soon as now. Somebody say amen. Number six, avoid giving people. All right. Avoid giving the unsaved the opportunity to be confused by the enemy. Avoid giving the unsaved the opportunity to be confused by the enemy from making an immediate decision. Avoid giving the unsaved the opportunity to be confused by the enemy from making an immediate decision. Because the devil is after them. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and in verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and in verse 4. He said, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Don't give them the opportunity to be confused. The devil does not want anybody saved. So you say, will you want to give your life to Christ? In cases, some will say, yes, I want. But those that the devil hold very well, you know those time? You say, um, the devil said, say, say you will do it later. It's okay, I will do it later. I'll let, just let me think over it. Papa Yerepo said, when he went to do teaching practice in a village, I think it was in the year of 1973 or so, he came and realized that there was no church in that village at all. And he said, what? There are churches everywhere and in this village there is no church and I am here in my lifetime. I am going to build a church before I go. He was doing teaching practice and in those days teachers were as respected as doctors are respected. Village teacher. So he went from house to house. He said, tell your father I am going to visit your house today. Yeah? Teacher is coming to our house. Clean the house. Clean everything. Then you come to the house. Most of them, other religion, other, many of them, pagans. He said, I came to bless all of you with the blessing of the Lord. They say, Amen. He said, so pray this prayer with me, the prayer of, this, of the blessing. Say, Lord, I receive your blessing. Lord, I receive your blessing. But I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And I, He said, he, he both preached and led them to Christ inside the prayer. The prayer he was leading them was the preaching and the altar call inside. By the time his days were over for in that village, a church was planted and the district head said, brought a lantern and, and told him, he said, anywhere church comes, civilization has come. We didn't have church before. You brought us church. Now we give you the gift of this lantern. It is light you brought to this village. May you take this same light to the whole world. May you take this light you brought us here. Take it to the whole world. Uh, is he going to the whole world or not? I never heard this before. I formed my principle of giving nobody the chance for the devil to confuse their mind. My own principle is a dead man doesn't have a choice. You make the choice for him. Somebody say amen. A dead man doesn't, doesn't have a choice. You make the choice for him. I, I heard the story of a man who was, um, I think a marriage counselor. 
who later became a funeral director and undertaker. They say, why did you change jobs? He said, because all the time, people come for counseling. After I spend three or four hours talking to them, they will still go and divorce. He said, but in this new job, these people, anywhere I lie them, that is where they lie. <laughs> what a change. They don't change position. Lie here, no argument. A dead man doesn't have a choice. So, do you want to give your life to Christ? Satan says, say no. Satan says, say I will do it later. So my principle is, you need Jesus in your life. And obviously, you know the path you are following is not correct. It will lead you in damnation. God loves you so much. He has made a provision for you. And his help is with you right now. I know you are convinced that you need to know God. Because you must escape the torment of hell. And make heaven at the end of your life. I'm aware of that. So pray this prayer with me. It's 100%. It's 100%. And in case they prayed with me because they, they can't say no, since I didn't give them a choice. By the time they finish praying and I lay hands on them, and I say, bring your hand, let's pray. They enter. I say, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of sin over this man. In the name of Jesus, I ask that he will experience the life of Jesus in his life. In the name of Jesus, the grace to live for God is released on you now. The grace to say yes to God and no to sin. Receive it now and go forward in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm sure something great happened to you. Yes, I know I can feel something great. Give the Lord the praise and then we take it from there. Give the Lord the praise, somebody. See what happened? You don't give the devil the opportunity because he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, I think we read it just now. If our gospel is hid, it is hid to them that are lost because the God of this world blinded the minds of them that believe not in case the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of, of God, should shine out of them. For that purpose, you just bypass the devil bypass even their mental analysis. Give them what they need. Peter said to the crippled man, you're asking me for money, I'm not giving you the money you need, but such as I have, I give unto you. The name of Jesus rise up and walk, and the man rose and walked. Something is happening to somebody, each other one, say loud, amen. Go ahead, go ahead and give the Lord a louder shout of victory. Number seven, avoid arguments and debates about the faith where necessary. We are called to declare the gospel, not debate the gospel. Avoid arguments and debates about the faith where necessary. Reason is, we are called to declare the gospel, not debate the gospel. In Titus chapter 3 and in verse 9, he said, but avoid foolish questions. And genealogies and contentions and strivings, arguments about the law, about the Bible, for they are unprofitable and vain. Doesn't no profit, only weary you out for nothing. And some of them you see. don't even need to repeat some of the things they say because it might confuse some people here now. Say nobody created God. How? All manner of territory. Once you encounter such people, tell them, 
you know what? May God convince you. I don't have the time right now. I need to talk to other people, okay? See you later. Bye. There are sincere questions you answer and sincere confusions you clear. But when you have the spirit of God, those who have a fight mentality, when you see them, you know. The spirit inside them shows that this one is not ready for anything. He just wants to irritate you, confuse you, and even make you angry that you ever encountered them. Some of them are possessed with Satan. After we finished a very, very massive crusade somewhere, miracles, signs, wonders, healings, deliverance, all manner happened. I went to pray for a man who was in almost in valley, and I met someone else there who was meant to be, quote and unquote, a clergy person of um, um, mainline denomination, big denomination. Even though later on I heard that they have sacked him since, dismembered him since. He was there with his gown and he had all manner of terrible arguments. I looked at him and said, I didn't come here for you. I think you need a psychiatric evaluation right now. The man I was talking with, because he was talking like a madman. The man that I came to preach so, I came to pray for said, did he come here for you? Walk out of my house now. That's how they walked him out. When I saw him, I thought he was a, he was a gentleman. I said, oh, I watch you on television, this and that. Before I knew it, Satan started talking from him. Later on, God told me, he said, that was a reaction to the crusade. Satan was angry. Am I communicating at all? Hallelujah. So, don't waste the... Look for people who are ready to be saved, not people who are ready to argue. I believe that the Lord will help us. Does this point help you? Because the devil may make you feel guilty. Oh, he is a soul too. Try and see whether you can convince him. No, 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 no. Many of them, it is not being convinced. They are, they, want, they are the ones who want to convince you. They want to convince you that you are the one doing the wrong thing. You are wasting your time going to church. They are just deceiving you in the name of church. The churches are looking for this or that. Hallelujah. That was point. Number law seven and eight. Endeavor to bear fruit that abide. Endeavor to bear fruit that abide. Let your focus be fruit that abide. This is simple. Don't give birth to children if you have no plan to look after them. Spiritual children inclusive. John chapter 15 verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name he may give it unto you somebody say a loud amen so when you give birth to spiritual children you lead them to Christ ensure that you cause them to abide what are the ways in which we cause fruit to abide? Number one, through intercession. Through 
through intercession. Galatians chapter 14. And in verse 19. He said, my little children of whom I traveled again travel in birth again until Christ be formed in you. After you have finished preaching, you travel in birth. You, remind, you remember them. You remember them at the place of prayer. And you remind God about them. Prayer band, intercessors, and every one of us, you remember them at the place of prayer and get them established. So, true intercession. Number two is true follow-up. True follow-up. Here is where you make contact with the young man or the young woman or the person that you led to Christ. And these days it is made possible through the phone call, the text message. Paul the Apostle once said, and I'm looking for that place. Let's go to every city where we had preached before. All right, let me just read this. Verse, chapter 16 of Acts, verse 4. He said, And they went to the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. All right, that's close to what I was looking for. But when you all right, verse 15. Is that, is that right? All right, that's right. Acts chapter 15, verse 36. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Somebody say follow up. And see how they do. So, you, you don't just lead people to Christ. You see how they do. You call them on the phone. Send them a text message. Where possible, you organize a meeting. You meet with each other and see how they do. And when this is well done, then you can confirm that you have gone through the process and you have souls that are established. Somebody say amen. Let us go through the laws from one to the last and then we'll be through tonight. Number one, Consider everyone. Can you read it with me together, everybody? Law number one. Consider everyone you meet unsaved until proven otherwise. Number two. Never be deceived by looks, appearance, or attitude. Number three. Everyone you see is going to die one day and possibly end in an uncertain and unpredictable eternity. Number four. The person you see today may not be there tomorrow, especially if they are not saved. Number five, as much as possible, give everyone the chance or opportunity to make their ways right with God as soon as when? As soon as when? Number six, avoid giving the unsaved the opportunity to be confused by the enemy from making an immediate decision. Avoid that. Number seven, Avoid arguments and debates about the faith where necessary. We are called to declare the gospel, not debate the gospel. Number eight, endeavor to bear fruit that abide. Let your focus be fruit that abide. If you will not take care of children, don't look after them, we said. Now, what are those two ways of making the fruit to abide? Number one is true intercession. You pray for them by name. And number two, true follow up. Stand up on your feet, people. Somebody received education tonight, say amen. Somebody received spiritual education tonight, say amen. Alright, it was not just education, but revelation. Say it louder, amen. Will it help your walk with God? Will it help your soul winning life? Will he help you to impact your generation? 
I'm sure a book will come out of all this shortly. Lift up your hands and your voice and let's appreciate the king. Honor him. Just honor him. Just lift your hands and thank him, Lord. Help me. Lift up your hands. Ask the Lord for the grace. After you have thanked him enough, ask him for the grace. To walk in this light. Father I have received light tonight. I ask for the grace. To walk in this light. Lift your voice. Grace to walk in this light. In Jesus precious name. Lift up your hands and your voice and say, Father, Father. say it louder, say, Father, Father. I, receive I receive the grace, the grace to, walk to walk in this life. In, this life. in, the, name of in Jesus. the name of Jesus, I receive, I receive the, grace the grace to walk, to walk in, the in the light of evangelism, of evangelism. in the light, in the light of, soul of soul winning. I receive, I receive the, grace the grace to touch life. To touch life. I, receive I receive the grace, the grace to influence. To influence. The salvation, the salvation of souls, of souls and, the and the discipleship of the same. Of the same. I receive that I grace receive now that. in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Open your mouth and pray. <laughs> You must Open your mouth and pray. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. I receive the grace. Open your mouth and receive the grace. The grace to influence life. The grace to influence life. The grace to touch life. To cause the salvation of soul. And to lead and occasion the discipleship of the Lord. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Red 
Jesus Christ. Lift your hands everywhere you are. I sense a fresh mantle coming on people. It's a combination of fresh passion, fresh grace, ease to minister, ease to get people saved. And are you ready for this? Ease to get people filled with the Holy Ghost. Lift up your hands and just receive something. It's happening.
Lift your hands everywhere you are. Metima Kagi. Metima Kagi. Akagi. Eze. Akagi, Akagi, Eze, Ay, 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 Lift your hands high and receive the touch of God from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. You are going to receive that touch of passion and that fresh mantle for soul winning. That touch of passion and that fresh mantle of soul winning is coming upon you now. Father, fresh passion, fresh fire. Fire for God, fire for soul winning. Fire of impact. Yes, yes, yes. At this time, yoke shall be broken. Bondage shall be dissolved. Affliction shall disappear. 
Everything my father in heaven has not planted in your body shall be uprooted. Every mystery around your life shall be dissolved. Lift your hands high and receive. Man shall take a lead at the count of seven. You place the hand on your head and scream the fire at the top of your voice. Father, let the fire fall. 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 In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, four, five, six. Are you ready? At the count of seven, you place the fire on your head. Let the fire fall. Mashatela ra Leperata sita lina gagadada. Exekina gagalala. In the name of Jesus, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the adoration. Something just happened. We 
we have been in a season of intense instruction intense on soul winning and evangelism and after every season of instruction it's a season of examination God wants to mark our script on what we have been hearing for the next four weeks beginning now every member of this church I'll elaborate more on this by Sunday we hit the road running out of all the souls you will win at least one person within the next four weeks one one person is a reproduction agenda a multiplication one person will take follow one person follow him through foundation class and now we have a summarized foundation class um give the lord the praise the, the trainings is divided into three now so there's a um, the preliminary one the intermediate one and then the 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 the, the, the ultimate one the final one okay that's apart from this do some this is um discipleship training class so we have the basic foundation class which will be highest three classes then the intermediate class and then the final class all right now that every your test is that one soul the soul is not just one gone through the foundation class possibly established in the home church established in church within the next four weeks one person one soul established is it hard some of you may do up to a hundred some of you may do up to ten but by the end of four weeks you should be able to account for one soul that is said this is one and i will explain the covenant detail of it to you by sunday i shared with our ministers today a couple of them who are uh, as the lord revealed them uh, and how to hit the road every home cell will bet one home cell also the next four weeks every church is mandated to bet at least one church no matter how little or no matter how big say lord you have taught us well you have instructed us well we are hitting the road to depopulate hell and populate heaven how many of you believe it is possible how many of you see it doable it's already done it's overdone it's extra done lift up your hands and say father thank you for this call to duty say for this call to duty i am available i am ready i am willing to be involved in this task in this assignment in this agenda i receive your grace lord to roll in this multiplication agenda i receive your grace i receive your power in this replication agenda i receive it in this explosion agenda i receive it lord in the name of jesus open your mouth and say to god again precious name there are those here tonight and if you have not done the foundation class yourself and be able to do it so it is easy for you to take people through what you have been through now anyone who is here tonight in need of surrender to jesus 
You have not yet given yourself to God. You need to do that first before you ask others to give themselves to God. Pick your Bibles, pick your bags, and quickly rush to the front here and let's pray with you. Take your Bibles and your bags. While they do that, the communion will also take position. I'll give you the count of seven to step forward. You want to be born again or you want to be saved? You want your sins forgiven? You want Jesus to be Lord over your life? Give you the count of seven. Rush forward. One. Two, keep coming. Go on, go on with your high octave. I want to give you another chance. You are bound by a tobacco, by alcoholism, a lifestyle you don't like, something you are not happy about, you are not happy with, and you want Jesus to deliver you from that lifestyle. Gambling, smoking, masturbation, homosexuality, lesbianism, any negative life, any lying, cheating, duping, bitterness, unforgiveness. And you want God to set you free from such life. Quickly pick your Bibles and pick your bags and step forward here and let us receive you. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all, surrender your hand on your chest and pray this prayer after me I say Lord Jesus I've come before you today to surrender my life to you today I have decided to follow you Lord no turning back forward ever backward never help from above I receive to serve you to love you to live for you thank you master in Jesus precious name amen I pray for you today the hold of sin be broken off your life the grace to live for god be released upon you in jesus precious name say aloud amen so shall it be hold on one minute our counselors behind you they will talk with you just now everybody stretch, stretch your hands in front of you and then i pray